Now, when we look at section 10, section 10 talks about the internal requirements of a complete specification. Uh, section 10 1 talks about description and title. Every specification, whether complete or provisional, shall describe the invention and shall begin with the title sufficiently indicating the subject matter. Now, description is a part of the specification, title is also as part of a specification. So here we get two parts, 10.1 uh, discloses two parts of the specification. Section 10.2 and 3 talks about drawings and models. It says that subject to the rules that may be made under this act, drawings may and shall if the com uh, controller so requires. So it's one of the rare provisions where you find may and shall being used together. Drawings may be supplied, that's the understanding, by the applicant or shall be supplied if the controller requires. So that's how we understand that. The applicant may give the drawings on their own, but if the controller requires it, then it becomes a shall provision, which means the drawings have to be submitted. Drawings is one thing that and it, it applies to both complete and provisional and the drawings will be construed as a part of the specification. It will be deemed to be a part of the specification. Similarly, subsection 3 talks about supplying model. It could be a model or a sample. Now here the need for a model or a sample arises only in particular cases. Now the controller has to consider that the application should be further supplemented by a model or a sample. So it's a requirement which the controller needs to indicate that the applicant has to satisfy. But here in this case a model or a sample shall not be deemed to be a part of the specification. So this is an important distinction to understand. While drawings became a part of the specification, a model or a sample that is supplied, say a prototype, will not be treated as a part of a specification, which means in a infringement proceeding or in any interpretation that is required, the controller or any the court or the tribunal will not look at the model or the sample. They will only look at the drawings. The third thing to remember in section 10 is that you have description, which we already saw in 10.1, and there is a requirement of best method and definiteness of claim. Now we find it in section 10.4 that A says that the complete specification shall fully and particularly describe the invention. So description is covered. Then it has to disclose the best method. Best method is also covered. And it has to end with the claim or claims defining the scope. Defining the scope is what we call definiteness of the claim. So it's a requirement. Apart from this, it also said that there shall be an abstract, which provides skeptical information. Abstract and biological material is the fourth thing that you need to remember about Section 10. We saw that Section 10.4D says that it shall be accompanied by an abstract to provide technical information. The proviso says that the controller may amend the abstract. Normally, an applicant can amend any part of the specification, but the power is specifically given to the controller in addition to the applicant to amend the abstract. So the controller has the power to amend the abstract for a, uh, providing better information to third parties. Now with regard to biological material, biological material is treated as a part of the disclosure. If the biological material uh, cannot be described in the uh, description and if such biological material is not available to the public, it's not commonly available, the act says that the application shall be completed by depositing the material to an international depository authority under the Budapest State Treaty. So we saw that what, what the Budapest Treaty is in Section 2 ABA mentions about uh, the Budapest Treaty. And the treaty requires that the following conditions have to be fulfilled. So the deposit of the material should not be later than the date of filing the application. The deposit of the material shall be made not later than the date of filing the application in India and a reference shall be made in the specification within the prescribed period. Disclosure of the material is treated at par with disclosure in the description. So it should not be later than the date of filing. 
again in B, we find that all the available characteristics of the material required for it, correctly identified and indicated, are included in the specification by name, address of the depository institution and date and number of the deposit of the material in the institution. So all these information has to be included in the specification. Access to the material is available in the depository institution only after the date of the application of the patent in India or if the priority is claimed after the date of priority. Again, following the disclosure norms, access to the material is allowed only after the date of filing the application. Why? Because filing preserves the priority not only for the material that is mentioned in the specification but also for the material that is deposited. Uh, you can look at the deposit requirement as a part of the disclosure requ requirement and that's why access will be provided only after the priority is preserved. Now finally it also says that they disclose the source and geographical original of the biological material in the specification when used in an invention. So disclosure of source and origin. Uh, the fifth thing we need to remember is with regard to unity of claims, inventorship and additions. 4A generally says that in the case of an international application designating India, the title, description, drawing, abstract and claims filed with the application shall be taken as a complete for the purposes of this act. 5 talks about unity of invention. Uh, it states that the claim shall relate to a single invention or to a group of inventions linked so as to form a single inventive concept. So it could be a group of inventions so they are linked to form a single inventive concept. So that is the unity of invention. And it also says that the claims shall be clear and succinct and shall be fairly based on the matter disclosed. So clear and succinct means that the claims have to be definite and there should not be any ambiguity there and they should be fairly based on the matter disclosed. You cannot have a claim which you have not described. So the claim should flow out of the description. It's a requirement. A claim that is not fairly based on the matter disclosed, that claim will not be allowed. So any claim that you include should be described either as an embodiment or in the description. It has to be clearly shown in the description. With description with regard to uh, disclosure of uh, how it works, the method of working, the best method, all that should be contained in the description before you can make a claim. In subsection 6, the declaration as to inventorship shall be furnished in a prescribed form within the prescribed period and the form as you know is form 5. And finally, for a complete specification filed after the provisional, may include claims in respect of development and additions to the invention which was described in the provisional. Now these developments and additions uh, would be entitled under the provisions of section 6 to be made a separate application for a patent. So this says that when you file a complaint which follows a provisional and there are certain developments and additions that happen after filing the provisional, they could be covered as a part of the complete. So you can file a complete and you can include claims with regard to developments that you made but the claims will have different priority. Now we will see the priority part in great detail when we cover section 11. When you file a provisional and follow it up with a complete and in the complete you add some additional matter, there are few developments and additions, those disclosures will be regarded as a separate disclosure though they will form a part of the same invention and they will get a different priority. So this provision says that the developments and additions in respect of which an applicant would be entitled to make a separate application. So it will be treated as a part of the same application but the priority will be different.